Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today's video is a collection of previous DIYs from years past. I bet there's some in there that you haven't yet seen. These are budget-friendly spring DIYs with a couple of Easter ones thrown in there. Remember that this video is a collection of previous videos. So you might hear me say, this is the first DIY, this is the last DIY multiple times, but I hope that you enjoy these. I've got some fun things in store for you. Let's get to it. Okay, so for this first DIY, I have this wooden cube. This is one of those boxes from the Dollar Tree that has a little drawer in it. So I guess it's a drawer, like the little cutouts on the drawer. This is the outer piece of it. And I have previously, obviously, done a DIY with it and stained it and painted it and put a heart on it. We're going to redo it. So I popped the heart off and then I'm taking the scrap of paper that I got in clearance at Hobby Lobby. And this pack of paper is mostly Christmas but I know this is like red and green, but it doesn't look at all Christmassy to me. <laughs> so I'm using it. And I'm just going to cut my paper. This was perfect. I just cut it into quarters. And that was the right size for this box. I'm not going, it's just shy. Like it's just small, a little bit smaller on each side, but it's okay because we're going to be covering that up. So it really did work perfect. And I'm just using a Dollar Tree glue stick and going to glue on each of the sides or each of the papers on all four sides. And I'm using this little roller tool that Plaid sent me. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's supposed to be used for like Mod Podging, but it worked great even for this with the glue stick. And I love this tool. <laughs> uh, really does help smooth things out and not have any bubbles and stuff. So now we're taking some popsicle sticks and I'm going to cut um, eight of them down for each corner. So two for each corner and I'm just cutting them down um, to the proper height, making sure that they're, you know, what they need to be before I go ahead and cut them all down. Then once they're all cut, you wanna just sand them, try to smooth them out a little bit. They're not going to be exactly perfect, but smooth them out. And then we're taking this white paint by Apple Barrel, which is also from Plaid, and I'm going to give these a coat of paint, maybe two, uh, just getting all of the sides and the ends. And, and then just doing the front, I didn't have to do the back on these and just giving them a nice coat of paint. And then I also have this wooden flower. This came from Dollar Tree as well in a pack from uh, Valentine's Day, I think, for Valentine's time. And I just gave that a coat of white paint as well. I painted the wood aside so that I didn't have to do as many coats as I would if I painted it over the red. And now we're coming back to the box. I kind of go back and forth just so I can let things dry. And we're gonna give this a coat of Mod Podge just to help it stick and uh, make sure to do the whole thing so that it has the same finish. And then once that was dry, we're gonna take a little bit of hot glue and we're going to do our little corners on this box. This is just gonna be a little decorative planter box for faux plants, obviously. Um, and I'm just putting these ones right all the way up to the edge. And then now you're seeing when I do the opposite, um, I'm gonna do the same thing. And I do as best I can to push it all the way up so that there's not a, like a gap in between where the two meet. And then any hot glue that kind of oozes out, I just kind of scraped it off with my finger or my fingernail and got that nice and smooth. If you're new here, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave and make sure you hit your notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. I love sharing budget-friendly DIYs with you. We are now going to glue our, with also with a hot glue, glue on our little rose, and this is just going to be the front of our box. And now we're gonna do some finishing touches. So you can see the kind of the gaps where the two pieces meet. Um, and so I'm gonna take this lightweight speckling from the Dollar Tree and just fill that in the best I can. It actually works really easy and let that dry and then give it a light sanding and then I'm gonna go back in to just touch up with a little bit more paint. And then I could have stopped here, but I have these little pearl strips from, I don't know what else to call them, from the Dollar Tree and I used them recently on another DIY and so I just kinda thought it would be nice to match that. Um, you can see it right here. So I'm just cutting them down to size and I'm um, just gonna put those on each of the popsicle sticks, if that makes sense. And that way all my pieces, they're like the same, but different. Anyways, this is how it came out. I thought it was super cute, and I just popped a Dollar Tree plant in it, and that's it. Our next DIY, I have this wooden house that I picked up for Hobby Lobby on clearance for 89 cents, but you can get similar pieces at the Dollar Tree, and I just sanded it down, and we're gonna give it a coat of pink paint 
this pink paint I have had forever and it had some clumps in it so it kind of gave me a little bit of a hassle but I made it work and then I threw this paint out. <laughs> I threw out quite a few paints when I got done with these these DIYs. I was like this is ridiculous why am I still trying to use these. They're not that expensive. Um, but anyways now I'm going to clean up where I got a little bit of the pink on the edges and just decided to do a coat of white paint all around the edges just to kind of you know smooth it out make it all look cohesive I guess and also to fix my little boo-boos with the pink paint. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really does help me out and say hello in the comments because that helps me out and it's fun to chat with you guys. Now I'm going in and kind of dry brushing I'm doing a little bit more on the edges of the house um, and then I'm also just kind of going over like the whole thing just to give it a little bit of texture. Um, I don't know I just didn't want it to be like a flat pink just seemed too plain. And now I'm going to just wrap it with a piece of white yarn. I thought that was fun instead of twine and just a piece of greenery that I had lying around. I'm not really sure where it, what it came off of but it was by itself so I thought that would be a good piece and we're just going to tie it on. I'm not hot gluing it or anything. I'm just going to tie it on. Then I'm going to tie a little knot and then I end up sliding the knot over to like the side you'll see in just a second but we're just going to tie it with a knot secure it and then I'm going to make a little finger bow here with some more yarn I just wrapped it around three fingers I didn't want a really big one you wrap it around a few times and then tie it in the middle and then I'm hot gluing that off to the side on where the knot is and I thought this was really cute very quick and easy to do and it'll be a nice little filler on my shelf. For our final DIY I have this sign from the Dollar Tree. I've had it for quite a while in my stash so I thought it was time to do it or time to use it rather and then I have this sign which is from Easter I think of last year but they have something similar if not the same this year and I'm just kind of playing around with it um, so we'll come back to that in a second. So back to our main piece here or our larger piece I'm just using my scraper to pull off this raised part. Um, it's just cardboard and I'm just trying to get a level surface here. We're going to end up covering this rather than painting. I wasn't sure at first so I just wanted it level. It didn't need to be perfect. Um, but we are going to paint the edges because the paper that we're going to use didn't really go with the sign here which I, was kind of too bad because I like it but it just I didn't have anything that would have made sense with it. So we're going to just give that a couple coats of paint and then we're going to go uh, while that's drying we're going to come over to our other piece here from the little Easter sign and I'm going to flip it over and paint more of that pink paint on it, getting all of the edges. I love this piece because I love all of like the ziggity zag edges and like, I don't know, I think it's just fun. And we don't have to worry about the back. We're going to be gluing this to the other piece so we don't need to cover up the glitter, sand off the glitter. Don't worry about it. Just give this a good couple of coats until I had a nice good coverage. I didn't want like the brown coming through on this particular piece. Um, that is nice sometimes when you're painting with white and you want a rustic look but anyways give that a coat of paint. So going back to our larger piece now I'm just taking that glue stick once again and I'm going to give it a good coverage of the glue and then we're going to put down some paper. This paper is from Hobby Lobby. It came in a large pack. It's got lots of this wood looking shiplap type paper but in different shades and I'm just going to Lay that on there, roll it out really good, and then flip it over and use my little cutting tool to trim off the edges. All right, so once again, going back to the pink piece, I've got this stencil from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just using a stencil brush and trying to not have too much paint so that we don't make a mess of it. And I don't have a Cricut, so you could use a Cricut if you wanted. You could use some like window clings, like if you want to do an Easter one with some Easter window clings, that would be really cute. Um, but this is just what I what I had. You could use stickers, um, whatever you want. But I'm going to use this stencil from the Dollar Tree and stencil on this phrase. It says happy together and I thought it came out really cute. I wanted to show you this piece. That piece there um, in the back is used to hang up this sign. But because I'm going to use this on a shelf, I'm going to put that piece on the bottom just to kind of help weight down the sign. I figured if I put it on the top, it might be a little to top heavy and more likely to tip over. And I'm just going to hot glue this down. I was having hot glue gun issues, but um, get some hot glue on there and lay this down. I was kind of mad because I did not get it centered. It's not awful, but it's not centered 
but I will disguise that when I decorate with it. But here's how it came out. Very quick and easy and there's so many different ways you could change this up to fit your style and your preferences, but I love how this came out. So for this first project, I've got a piece of wood. This came in a pack of just like scrap pieces of wood from Hobby Lobby on clearance. And I'm gonna give it all a coat of a white chalk paint. Um, you could use any pieces of wood or you could use a sign like from Dollar Tree, whatever you happen to have. I have some calendars that I just haven't done a ton with and I really wanted to use them. So once I gave everything a good coat of paint, I actually painted all of the sides and the back and everything. I picked out my calendar page and I began to put some Mod Podge on here and I'm trying to get better at my Mod Podge skills to not have any wrinkles. So uh, as I lay this page down, I am using my roller that Plaid sent me and it does definitely help. And then after I did this, I painted the wood piece one day and by the time I came back to do the Mod Podge the next day, I had totally forgotten what my intention was. So I got this all situated and then I realized this is not what I wanted to do and so I pulled it up and it left a little bit behind, but I was like, well, we're just going to go with it anyway. So I put some Mod Podge down again and repositioned it and I was able to make it work with minimal damage. So I let this get nice and dry and then I'm using a sanding block and just sanding down the edges to kind of just, it's a nice way of like kind of cutting off the edges. It works really well and you can see here it just gives a nice clean edge. Now this wood is not like fully um, like smooth all the way around. It's not a perfect shape um, but I'm still making it work. So when I was doing the top I accidentally ripped the top part which is the piece that I forgot that I'd wanted to use, but I'm going to still work with it and you can't even tell. So now I'm taking the little part um, with the words and I'm just painting on some water around the edges so that I can tear this and it works great. And it, the uh, torn edge is just kind of blends in a little bit better because we're gonna be layering this on top of the other part of the page. So once I have it all kind of cut out, if you want to say it that way, the way I wanted it, I'm going to put some Mod Podge down and lay this down carefully, just kind of realigning the places that I had torn. They would not have torn if I hadn't originally Mod Podge this all in the wrong place. <laughs> so I'm just carefully um, placing this down and then I'm going around the edges with some Mod Podge just to get those edges to... Um, to stop curling up and I will ultimately Mod Podge the whole thing and I actually went around the back and sides again with plaster instead of white because I just thought it went better with the sign but I don't show that all to you so and now I'm going to go in here though with some plaster and just dry brushing over it there was one spot where you could see a little bit of the calendar through the back and I also just kind of wanted to make sure everything blended together. So I'm dry brushing with a little bit of plaster and you can see I wiped some of it off with my fingers. And then I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of antique wax around the edges and across the whole thing as well. And it just kind of, I don't know, gave that little bit extra of detail and I felt like it helped everything blend together. Now this calendar page here is the inspiration color-wise for what I'm doing with the rest of the DIYs, but you of course can do this with any page or colors that you want. Now this piece does stand up pretty decently on its own, but the place that I planned on putting it um, does get kind of bumped into a little bit. And so I just decided to attach some jingle blocks in the back or the tumbling tower blocks with some wood glue and hot glue just to be sure. And I did paint over those as well, just so that it looked finished from the back. But here it is. You cannot even tell that the spring is in the air was kind of added on. It blends together so nicely. And I love how this one came out. So I went into uh, my stash. This is more of those wood pieces that came in the same pack as the other one that I bought on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And then I have these paints that I got um, sent to me from Plaid. This is the, I don't know if you call it, let's say ceramic coat, but I absolutely love these colors and they really match perfectly <laughs> with the calendar page. So I was pretty excited. So I'm gonna start by just painting each one of these blocks a different color. And I do give it a couple of coats and I do paint all of the sides. I've got this little welcome sign. This came off, I think, of a fall sign um, from Dollar Tree. And whenever I take things apart, I just save everything. So I've, I've had this for a while. And I'm taking another color of paint in the same brand, the Ceramico, which is also, like I said, by Plaid. And I'm just taking a small paintbrush and I am painting over the word welcome. I had sanded down the welcome piece to kind of get off some glitter and also to fade out the brown a little bit. Um, 
but when it was all said and done, I kind of felt like the brown was still a little bit too prominent. So I'm going to fix that in just a minute here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. It lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my video. It also lets me know so that I know what kind of things you like to see. And I also hope that you will consider subscribing before you leave. I love sharing budget-friendly DIYs. Sometimes it's Dollar Tree items. Sometimes I've been getting into some thrifted items. Um, but I just love sharing budget-friendly DIYs and home decor with you. So I hope that you consider it sticking around. So now I'm going to take some plaster by Waverly and I'm going to dry brush over all of these wood pieces. I still have not attached them yet, so I'm kind of going in between each spot and just around the edges. And then I decided that I wanted to dry brush a little bit over that welcome sign because I just felt like the brown needed to be muted. And then I ended up deciding to just go a little bit heavy with the dry brushing and then just paint over the welcome word again and um, brighten it up again. But now the background was kind of more white and or plaster was actually the color. I hope that all makes sense. I was really thrilled with how it came out in the end. I felt like it just kind of all flowed together a little bit better. And then I wanted to add a little bit more embellishment on the welcome sign. So I took this little dotting tool that I have from Dollar Tree and I dipped that in the paint and just put little dots around the edge of the welcome sign. And now we're going to begin assembling this. I'm going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and we just attach all of these together. Now they are not finished and smooth, so I really just held it down nice and tight for a minute to try to get it to hold. I'm using my fingers to make sure it's centered. Um, but I was pushing down quite a bit here just to make sure it was really connecting because like I said, these were not perfect pieces. They were just scrap wood. So now we're going to move on to some embellishment. And this is the idea that I got from Sammy. And now she did something totally different. She used some scrap fabric to make a bunny's tail on a DIY. So this really isn't the exact same, but it sparked something in my mind. I have this little piece here that I think was a handle from a bag at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of wrapping it and rolling it to make a little like bud of a flower using some hot glue, um, getting it to the size I wanted. And I wasn't totally sure how this was going to work out because um, this material was a little bit thicker. So I couldn't really like do a bunch of twisting with it, but I just hot glued it and got it into really just a cylinder, I guess, and trimmed off um, the bottom and just kind of hot glued in all of the edges to make it look good. And then I took some leaves that I had on hand. I tried to find the smallest ones I could and um, hot glue them together and put them, I'm sorry, and then put the flower in the center. The leaves were still a little bit too big, so I did trim them down a little bit. And I did make two of these flowers all together. Definitely check out Sammy's channel and check out that video. She, you know, she is going to show you a lot better. Um, but it just kind of sparked this idea in me that I might have something that I can make these little flowers for some embellishment. And I like the little burlap color, even though it's not burlap, because it ties in the little bit of brown from the welcome. Anyways, it all makes sense in my head. So I hot glued down the welcome sign and the little flowers. And that was all I needed to do for this piece. I love how this came out as well and the colors coordinate nicely with the other one. For my final DIY in today's video, I'm going to take this little wood box. It was one of those cube drawer things from the Dollar Tree. I've previously DIY'd it as you can see and taking that salmon color once again and we are going to paint over this. I just like to reuse sometimes things that I've made that I have. I just wasn't using this. I actually recently redid the other one of these. I had made two of them and I was like, well, I'll redo this one as well. So I'm just going to give this a couple coats of that salmon color just to um, give it. I didn't want any of the other stuff to show through. So I gave it two coats. And then I have this little scrap piece off of a sign, I think from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to I just put a little dab of hot glue and then wrap some yarn around this. Now I saw this recently in a video by Crafts, or Caitlin by Crafts by Kate, Caitlin, goodness gracious, her name is Caitlin. Her channel is Crafts by Caitlin. <laughs> and she did some really fun projects using some yarn and we're making a little stamp. And I thought this was such a cute idea. So I'm just kind of wrapping it around until I get the look that I want. I decided to use the back of the sign where the paint for the where the paint is going to be in case I decide I want to use that little sign on a future DIY. I didn't want to totally wreck it. So once I have what I'm looking for, um, I'm 
You can do as much or as little yarn here as you want. I'm just hot gluing it down once again. And then we're going to paint it. So I'm taking that same yellow color that I had previously used and putting a good amount of yarn on that, of yarn. Guys, I am tongue tied. A good amount of paint uh, over the yarn. And then I'm gonna do a practice one and just stamp it here on my craft paper. And I was like, yep, that's what I need to do. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, paint that again. And I just put the stamp down twice on each side, kind of overlapping them a little bit and did that all the way around and then just lightly did it across the top edges as well. And I thought this is super cute. Um, you could use this on a sign. You could use this on so many things. Anyways, I thought it was really fun. And of course, because I'm only going to share things with you that I think are fun and that I think are cute. So anyways, once that was all done, I did end up coating that with Mod Podge. You don't necessarily have to, but I pulled, pulled these flowers. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting them apart, bending the stems and popping them in there. This is going to be up in a place where people aren't going to be able to see it or reach it. So I wasn't too worried about securing them in with like floral foam. But of course, feel free to do that if you think that's going to work better for you. Um, but I was just going to bend the stems and make myself a little arrangement. And I'm going to put this arrangement inside of another DIY that I previously made. I will link that video. It's on my other channel. Um, I used to have it. Well, I still have that other channel, but I used to show my DIYs over there. But this cute little lantern is one that I made and I love it. I love changing it out for each season. I think these came out great. All right, so for this first one, we're going to use this easel. This is from the Dollar Tree. As you can see, I already did a DIY on it for the fall, but I just thought I would repurpose that. So I popped off the little wooden leaf and then scraped off any glue and just sanded the whole thing down. Probably didn't need to. I mainly sanded it down for the sake of the glue that was on there. And then I just wiped it off because you want a clean surface, no dust or anything. And we're going to use the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster. I did end up giving this two coats of paint, I believe. My plaster is getting a little bit old. Actually, all my paints are getting a little bit old. I need to be using them more, apparently. Maybe I had too many choices to choose from. Um, but anyways, so it was not, it was a little thick. Um, so I did two coats and then I sanded it down to smooth it out. And then I also roughed up the edges a little bit because I do like a slightly distressed look. And then I have this stencil. This is from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just taping it down, but also taping over any openings near the part that I'm going to be using just so that I don't get any paint where I don't want it. We're going to go in with Waverly in the color Celery. I really love using Celery and the color Moss in my like everyday decor, but I think that those colors work really great for spring and summer as well. So I do tend to use them a lot this time of year. And I'm just using a pouncer brush. Don't want to have too much paint on it. This was not a perfect stencil, but it really came out fine for the look that I'm going for. Um, you just want to do up and down. Don't oversaturate your sponge and don't go over any spots too off, like too much. Just let it be. And of course, you're letting everything dry in between. Otherwise, this is a super, super quick DIY um, and the paint doesn't take that long to dry anyway. But um, make sure you're letting it dry before we're moving on. Those gold butterfly stickers are from, I think it's wall stickers from Dollar Tree. And I will say on walls, maybe they come off and they're easily movable. On painted surface, they stick. So where you put them down, you're going to leave them. Um, but I put one of those on and then I cut out the these words uh, Simply Blessed from a rub-on transfer pack from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just um, placing that down and rubbing that to do the transfer. I always pull the plastic transfer part off slowly in case it is not fully transferred. You can just easily lay it back down. And then I decided I needed one more of the gold butterflies. And I love the this subtle and kind of simple, it's like neutral but with color look. I'll show you the finished product at the end for all of these. So now we're moving on to this house sign. This is from the Dollar Tree. This is how it came. I wanted to pull off the heart. Um, I thought about just using it and painting it and doing something different with it on there, but it was on crooked and it was bothering me. So this takes a few different looks as we go through this DIY. I'm going to just take you through the process. So I'm using my hairdryer to heat up the glue and I just realized the whole thing was not going to come off. It was just, it wasn't going to. So I got off most of it and then I was like, okay, what are we going to use to cover it? So I have this chalk tag. I'm moving through it quickly because I changed my mind but I wanted to show you the process. This is a chalk tag that come in a pack from the Dollar Tree. And 
I stenciled and then I transferred over it. I stenciled on both sides. I just wasn't liking how it was coming out. My vision was not working. So I painted it with the plaster and then I'm using the pouncer brush with celery and we're just going to give it kind of a neutral base here. I did do the pouncing technique because it gave it a little bit more texture. And then I cut out the words love, joy, and peace. Or it was love, peace, joy. It was the order it was in um, on the transfer sheet. And I just wasn't a fan of it. So I decided to cut it apart and do it kind of my own. So I just did love, joy, peace, and I centered it the way I wanted it to. And I'm just using my fingernail to transfer these on. I do go in and add a couple little greenery floral pieces from that same pack as well. I just didn't show that to you. And then I decided I was going to paint this house. You can paint over fabric. Um, and I use the plaster paint. I do um, dip my paintbrush in the water a few times to make it more easily movable. Like I said, this paint is old and pretty thick. So it took me a little bit of time. I did a couple of coats. You could do it until you can't see anything, but I didn't mind the texture or the pattern showing through slightly, but you can just do it however you want to do that. You could also just scrapbook over it, but I thought this scrapbook paper over it, I should say. But I thought that this worked well for the look I was going for. And then I painted the roof, didn't like the color, I painted it again. I'm using those hippie chalk paint markers or acrylic, I think they might be acrylic, acrylic paint markers from Hippie Crafter that they sent me. I shared it in another DIY and I love them for this kind of project because I don't have to worry about any paint dripping over the edges or anything. So gave that a, uh, painted that white with those paint markers. We're going to hot glue the chalk, chalk tag onto the center. And then I made a little bow out of the twine that it uh, came on. I just pulled that off, made a little bow, and hot glued that on and trimmed the edges. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a very easy way for you to help out my channel. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying it and making them more likely to share it with others. Now this house sign does stand up okay on its own, but just to be sure it wouldn't tip over too easily if like the piece of furniture it's on is like bumped at all, I just hot glued a couple of those tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree on the back to just give it a wider base. So moving on, this little sign is super cute, came from the Dollar Tree. We're going to open it up and we're going to pop out the center, the sign part. When I'm looking at signs to pick up from Dollar Tree, I love ones like this that just have the prongs on the back. It makes it super easy to DIY because it's very easy to take out just like a picture frame. So we're going to paint the back. I'm using, again, the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Celery. I do end up doing a couple of coats of that. Um, you can paint or put paper on the back side to finish that up. I will probably on, honestly end up doing the other side in, a, in another DIY, so I just left it as is. But um, if you want to finish it up, feel free to do that. Now, I know these next couple clips are a little bit blurry, and I apologize. It does get better. I'm taking this transfer, rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to cut off the bottom. It's kind of got like a viney, uh, florally pattern, and we're just going to put that on the bottom. And then we're also going to cut out a couple of the letters as well to write spring. And they're different sizes, but they're all the same font, and I thought it was a cute one, cute idea. I'm using various things to <laughs> do the rub-on transfers with. Um, I just use anything I have lying around in front of me. If you are new to my channel and you enjoy budget-friendly and easy DIYs, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel and make sure that you have your notification bell turned on. And that way you can check out my future DIYs and that also helps my channel out so much. So if you're enjoying what I'm doing, then I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And once the, that is all finished, I did Mod Podge it just to seal it in a little bit and popped it back in the frame. And this is how they came out. I love how these turned out and I think they're great for spring or just kind of every day. Obviously the word spring is on there, but you can put whatever you want if you don't want it to be spring specific. And that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. But I have this little house sign, which is also from the Dollar Tree, although not picked up in that last haul. And I'm just using my hair dryer because the sticker was not coming off well at all. But once I heated it up just a little bit, it peeled right off just so that it looks nice in the back. Um, and then I was initially going to cut, um, was going to put paper down inside, but then I went in to, to paint it to just cover the edges in case the paper wasn't like perfect. 
and I ended up deciding to just leave it painted instead of putting the paper down. So I did a couple coats. I'm using Plaster by Waverly, which is watered down because it was getting towards the bottom. Um, so I had to do a couple of coats, and you could kind of still see the stripes through, but not the colors at all. You could just kind of see like the different depths, so you could kind of see the stripes. So I, that didn't bother me, but I could have just done another coat if I needed to. So there it is, all painted, and this one is going to be really easy. I love this for spring. I'm going to use the wooden cubes or wooden blocks from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to hot glue one of those on the back of each of the bunnies because I want to go for a little bit more dimensional uh, sign that we're making here. And But you could also just you could skip that if you wanted or just use something else. But the bunny is big enough that it totally blocks the block. You can't see it at all. You could use wood glue if you wanted. Um, I have pretty good luck with the hot glue, plus I sometimes take my DIYs apart and redo them. So hot glue is what I'm using. And then I have these rub-on transfers. I was showing you, trying to show you the package. It was a whole bunch of words, and I've been using them for quite a while. And I just pulled out a couple of words that I thought went together, and we're just going to rub them on. All you have to do is take off the backing, place them down, and uh, lift them up. I was showing you that if you're having a hard time lifting up the clear, um, like the top part, I sometimes just use the paper backing that I pulled off, and that seems to um, work really well to pull it off. So the words I chose was embrace adventure. I don't know, I had this image in my mind of the bunnies being playful. I don't know, I thought it was cute. Um, and so I am just hot gluing the wood blocks to the back of this sign. Um, you could do this for Easter if you wanted to put an Easter saying. I'm not really decorating for Easter, but I thought this was cute for spring as well because, you know, all the critters come out when the weather is nice. And I'm going with a more neutral palette for this DIY, but the other two have a lot of color. So, of course, switch it up for your preference. And um, then I wanted to add in a couple of little butterflies. These are really, really cute. Um, love this find from Dollar Tree. And I'm using what is some type of like a tacky glue um, to adhere these with using a toothpick because I felt like they were so they were so small that hot glue would be tough to get on there right. Although you'll see in another DIY I do use my hot glue. But the tacky glue... Or I don't know what this is called. It's called like crafter's glue, but it's just like tacky glue. This worked really good. And I just used the toothpick to, a, um, to apply the glue and added a couple of those. I will show a kind of finished look at the end for all of them. So for this next one, I pulled out this little sign. This was a like a tiered tray pack kind of for Christmas from Walmart that I picked up at the end of the season on clearance so I could just make them over. I sanded down to one edge because the paper was hanging off a little bit, took off the sticker, and we're going to give this a couple coats of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Celery. I'm painting the back and the sides, and I do use do two coats because the MDF kind of sucks up the paint, so it dries pretty quick, but um, I did two coats. And then we'll end up covering the back side or what was the front side later. Now I'm just taking those wood pieces from Dollar Tree that I picked up. I'm trying to cut them down. I used scissors, which worked fine. It wasn't that hard, even though it looks like it, but I was trying to be careful to not split the wood, which it did a little bit, but I repair it. Anyways, I wanted two of these to fit along the um, width or length of the sign. I ended up switching to a cutting mat and a utility knife because I felt like that was more, I don't know, not going to split it as much. So this is what I'm going for. You can use anything you want as a base. I'm just using that sign that I had on hand, but you could use another sign from Dollar Tree, a scrap piece of wood, whatever you want. This is just a little like tear tray filler piece. And I'm just using more of that tacky glue to glue them together um, best I can. And then I'm repairing some places that had gotten weak. And then I'm going in with the Hippie Crafters markers that they had sent me. Um, I showed you them a few videos back and I really do enjoy them. So I'm using them to paint this piece, but you could also use a tiny paintbrush and some uh, acrylic paint. You could also just stain this or leave it as is, but this one I'm going for a little bit more color. So I'm just painting the leaves and the flowers, and we're going to paint the fence as well. I was just having fun with this. But once again, do it with whatever colors and themes go with your decor. I try to do stuff that doesn't always just go with my decor. That's stuff that maybe other people like. 
because I'm just trying to give you guys ideas and inspiration. So I definitely use a little bit more neutrals when it comes to this kind of thing, but the colors are definitely fun. And then I'm going to use the furniture markers from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use that on the fence. That worked really great. Um, places that had a little bit of um, glue residue didn't come out the same shade, but that's okay. You're not going to really be able to see it super well anyway, but just something to keep in mind. And I'm just using, wow, that was really fast. I sped that up a lot. I'm using a glue stick and some scrapbook paper for the bottom. You could paint it. You could also just leave it. We're going to glue it down and then cut off the edges. And that way, the bottom of it at least looks finished. You could also use Mod Podge, however you want to do that. And then I'm just taking some hot glue along the back. We're going to build our little scene. I put a nice um, bead of glue, stuck it down in there, held it till it set a little bit. And then I'm also going to go in... I don't know how to say that, but it's some type of moss grass stuff from the Crafters Square area. And um, I'm going to put that in. To me, it looks a little bit more grassy. So I'm just going to put some more along the back in front of the fence line because that allowed me to add even more hot glue, which I feel like would help hold it even better. Once again, feel free to use wood glue if you want. You could put a little dowel rod or skewer on the back where you could add more glue as well. But this is how I chose to do it, and I'm just going to put that on both sides and stick the grass in. I should say I'm going to put hot glue on both sides and stick the grass in. And then I'm going to pull one of these moss bunnies from the Dollar Tree. I will tell you, I pulled them out and I sprayed them with hairspray because they were kind of shedding. So you don't might not want to do that, but just kind of put that out there. Then hot glued a little carrot on it uh, as well, and then I decided to do a little bit more of that grass moss stuff. It had a fancy name. I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to put that around the bunny as well. So the bunny is kind of sitting in, you know, a field of grass. I'll show it to you at the end. All right, on to our last DIY. I've got the flower wood ornament, I think is what it was called. My lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree is old and more crumbly than normal, so it wasn't super great, but I'm using it to fill in the hole. You can use whatever you've got. You can also um, use Hot glue, we're going to let that dry. Once it dries, just sand it off to make it smooth. Now I'm going to take one of our terracotta pots using more of that plaster paint. And I was going to try to do a lighter dry brush and then build on it, but it went on a little bit heavy, so I didn't get enough off of my paintbrush. But you're going to see, I'm just going to keep going with it. One thing with the terracotta is it sucks up the paint. So there's really not a whole lot of room to move paint around on it. Um, you could also layer this with other colors, just depending on the look you want. You could do a solid if you wanted it solid. I wanted it a little bit rustic, but not over the top rustic. I also painted the top and the bottom and just a little bit of the inside because I wasn't sure how this whole thing was going to come, come through. Now we're going to go back in with my paint markers and we're going to just paint this guy here. We're just going to paint the leaves, the stem, the flower. You know, we're making it bright, we're making it colorful. You could also, once again, use your acrylic paints. You could cover it with paper. That would be really fun as well. I've got several more because I think it came in like a five or six pack. So we'll see how I decide to use the rest of them. And um, if you wanted to, you could flip it over. So you don't have, there's like little dark lines that give definition here. If you didn't want that, you could flip it over and paint the back side. Always remember, it's for ideas and inspiration. Do it how you like it. And then I'm just taking some floral foam pieces. These are just scraps I had, but they fit perfect. And I'm just shoving them in here. Once again, if you want more permanent, you can hot glue that in. I tend to take a lot of my DIYs apart because I make a lot of them for the videos and like reuse some of the pieces. So I'm just going to hot glue a part of a dowel rod. You could also use a wooden skewer on the back of our flower. Feel free to finish off the backside if you want. And I'm just going to stick that in the floral foam. We're going to take more of that fancy grass moss stuff, tuck that around. You could also just use the moss if you want. But I like the green color of this in these DIYs. And we're just tucking it in, not using any hot glue, but you can if you want. Giving it a little bit of a haircut. And I was like, okay, I think I want to do something else. So I'm adding in some of these butterflies. I'm putting one at the top because I didn't feel like the hole covered very well. I think it was just my spackling. And then I added just a couple more, but um, this is clearly not supposed to look realistic. It's a wood flower, <laughs> but um, it's more like fun and whimsical 
is kind of what I was going for. And this is how they came out. I love all of them. I think the neutral one with the bunnies is probably my favorite just because that's kind of my what I naturally gravitate towards. But I do like how they all came out. Let me know what one is your favorite. Do you decorate for spring, Easter? Do you do any of that? I feel like some of these could just be up for like spring and summer. All right, so starting off, I've got this bird. This is from the Dollar General. Um, they are usually a dollar, but I'm fairly confident I picked this one up on clearance for like 10 cents. Dollar General clearance after seasonal stuff or after season stuff is great find. <laughs> um, and I'm just painting that with some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Mine is a little bit thinned out because I've had to put a little bit of water at the bottom because, well, I'm at the bottom and it's older and it's thicker. So it's not a super, um, I think I did two coats with it because it was a little bit thinner, but that's okay. And we are going to then go in with some clear wax from Waverly and I'm tinting it with or mixing it with some Waverly chalk paint in the color elephant. Now, I was thinking I may have done my ratios off. I feel like I should have done less paint, more wax, but it works out fine in the end. I'm brushing it on pretty thick, and then I'm using a paper towel to wipe it off. It was initially a little bit darker than I wanted, so I just really worked the paper towel to wipe it off and just kept going until I got the desired look. I love these little birds because they have so much texture, and so I just wanted to bring that texture out but mute it down a little bit for my decor. But you, of course, could do this any color you wanted. Um, and you could use a colored wax if you wanted as well. Um, I thought about using my antique wax, but um, I didn't. I went with this. So wiping it on, brushing it on, wiping it off. And you can see here I'm just pressing a little bit harder in some areas, just really wanting to highlight all of the texture. And then I've got this candle, I don't know, holder, pedestal, something or other, and a terracotta pot. The blue base is actually from Hobby Lobby, and I picked it up on clearance. You could see it was a little bit chipped. It was after season, and I paid, I don't know, 20 cents for it. I think I paid less than that. I got like three of them because it was so cheap. Anyways, I'm using some super glue gel, and I was trying to use my hot glue gun, and I was not figuring it out. I've had this one for years and haven't been able to figure it out. I figured out later in the video, but at this point, I wasn't. So I'm just going in with some super glue gel and I was trying to figure out how long it's supposed to take before it holds and I moved on a little too quickly, you'll see in a second. But um, then I'm gonna go in with some Mod Podge. I'm using the dishwasher safe one just because that's what I had around. Um, and you can see it popped off. And the danger of that was when I grabbed it with my hand, I got super glue gel on my fingers. But I had to keep moving because I was like, the Mod Podge is going to be streaky and clumpy if I don't keep doing it. Um, I'm doing the Mod Podge so that the paint will adhere better to the ceramic base here. Um, anyways, then I'm going in with a little bit more super glue and we're going to weight it down to let it fully dry. You can see I kept um, wrapping my paintbrush from the Mod Podge in some plastic wrap. And that's just so that I didn't have to completely wash it in between. That was keeping it from drying out. And that worked really well. And then I'm going in with more of the Waverly Chalk paint and plaster. I did a couple coats in the whole thing because I was wanting to give it a good base coat. And then I'm going in with some greens and a brown. I use a little bit of the um, gray paint that was on the bird. And guys, I'm going to take you th through the process. So I wanted a really weathered, old pot looking piece that looked like it had just been out in the garden for a ton of time and a bird comes and makes its home. So at first year, it looks like I'm going for some type of camo look. Um, I was dotting it on, smudging it, smearing it, wiping it, blending it. And at first I just thought, oh my gosh, what did I do this thing to this thing? <laughs> I'm gonna have to start over again. Um, I went with the greens because of like, you know, moss and things like that growing up on it. Um, it's going to be okay in the end. I actually really, really like how it turned out. Um, but this went through a little bit of a journey, uh, this whole process. So I am I decided I needed to lighten it up. So I went back in with some plaster, but just did a dry brush on the whole thing. And uh, this is really sped up. I know my hand's moving crazy here, but I, this portion of the video would have been very long if I didn't do that. And at one point I was trying to layer too quickly, things were not dried in between. Um, 
So I felt like I was just destroying everything. Anyways, I pull out my hair dryer. I have a low uh, cool temp setting on my hair dryer, and that's what I usually use to dry paint. And we're just going to build and build, brush, wipe, brush, wipe. Um, I did go in with some like green and, um, no, I think brown in a couple spots that I went thicker and I just dabbed it with the, the paper towel instead of wiping it because I wanted some darker spots. I wanted rusty, mossy, really old. So I'll show it to you at the end. And then I just put a little napkin in the pot to fill it in a little bit. And then I just made a rough nest with the moss. I did not glue this. I did not even attach this to the top. I just set the bird on top and I thought this was really cute. Like I said, I will show this to you at the end of the video. So even when projects look like they're not coming out, don't give up, keep going. <laughs> and it still may end up working. Okay, so for our next one, I have this little tin house from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna give it a coat of Mod Podge. Once again, Mod Podge helps paint stick to certain surfaces better. So that's what we're doing here. And then once it was dry, going in with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Celery. I love the color Celery and Moss for my everyday decor and for spring. I just love incorporating those colors. So we're gonna give this a couple of coats. And I was trying really hard to keep the backside clean too because I wasn't sure how that was gonna end up working, but you'll see. So we're gonna let that dry. I have this canvasy burlapy bag from Dollar Tree. As you can see, I've used portions of it before. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm trying out these stamps. I've actually used these stamps before. They're from the Dollar Tree. And I tried out by stamping it on paper. And then I tried it on the fabric and I didn't like it. It just, it wasn't working, but I figured I'd show this to you anyway. I tried it a couple times. You'll see, um, I'm just moving up on the material and now we're gonna use a stencil. This is also from the Dollar Tree. It comes in one of those wheel stencils um, and this is a bird and I'm just covering up a branch that was in there for like the bird to be sitting on because I didn't wanna stencil that. And I'm going to stencil that with some, I think I'm just using some like white acrylic paint by Apple Barrel and that worked. So. We're gonna, we're gonna go with that. And I'm going back and forth because this is just how the project worked out. So I'm going to seal the paint in on this with some more Mod Podge so that it does not chip off. And then we're going to take this material and we're going to attach it. So I'm gonna start by hot gluing. I did put on some finger protectors because I was using the hot temp glue setting and this material is obviously, you know, see-through. So I have a little silicone spatula brush thing. It's actually from the makeup department of the Dollar Tree and my finger protectors. And we're going to first hot glue around the circle opening because I wanted to make sure this bird was centered and the material didn't shift. And then we'll go around and hot glue around the entire house because I wanted it to just look more finished in the back and I thought if I covered the whole thing with the material, it would look more finished. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much and it lets YouTube know that you're liking what I'm doing and they think maybe someone else will like this video too and they're more likely to share my video with others. Once the hot glue is all done, we're gonna just trim this off and make sure that it's trimmed down to size and that nothing is peeking out the front of the house so it just has a nice clean finish. I decided to cut out a little bit more material to layer it because it was a little too see-through and the bird kinda of got lost I could have done a colored bird, but I really did want to keep it a little bit more neutral, but adding another layer of the fabric helped a lot. And once again, I'll show you that at the end. For our last DIY, I have this metal hello sign from the Dollar Tree. They had it in a couple of different phrases, I don't or words, I should say. I don't remember, I think one was garden, and then maybe spring, I'm not sure. Once again, we're gonna cover this with Mod Podge, and then I'm going in with some paints. I've got Lime Sorbet and Daybreak, these are both from Plaid. They sent them to me a while back and I wanted to go for something bright and springy. This is gonna be going outside on a wreath and I'll show you how we put that together. So I'm gonna paint the bird yellow and the rest of it we're gonna do in that pretty green color. And I just took my time. I um, didn't want to make a mess on this. Because this is going on a wreath, the backside would be seen from the inside of my house because my door is glass. So I end up cleaning up the back of this metal sign with like a baby wipe for any paint that got on the back. But I was trying to be neat while I was painting and um, 
this was going to take a couple of coats. So once again, I went in with my hair dryer on the cool setting and dried it. And I did probably, I think I might have done three or four coats in the yellow for the bird and maybe three um, for the green. But I just wanted a nice, bright look. And it wasn't hard, but it did take a little bit of time because I had to do a couple of coats. It probably would have done less if I had Waverly chalk paint, but I didn't have the colors I wanted for this sign. And then once it was done, once again, we're going to seal it with some Mod Podge. I think I did two coats of this just because I wanted to protect it more since it would be outside. I think there was an outdoor Mod Podge, but I do not have that, and I need to look into that. But I, once again, gave that a coat, and I was just kind of wiping off the Mod Podge as it went through the little cutouts because I didn't want globs of Mod Podge drying on the backside. Because once again, you'd be able to see the back of this through my door, and I just wanted it to look nice. And I ended up getting this grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby. And for some reason, I had a heck of a time getting this tag off because it was on with like a thick metal ring. But I got it off, or you could just tuck it away so it can't be seen. But this wreath was $4.99. It was not on sale. When I went in, all of the wreaths were were um, were half off, but this particular one wasn't. But it's $4.99, and I know that I can make it over and reuse it over and over again. So I'm using this berry garland. It's like a white and green. It is from the Dollar Tree, but Hobby Lobby has it as well. At the Dollar Tree, it is called, I think, berry garland. I don't know what it's called at Hobby Lobby. And then we're going to, and it's wired. So I'm just wrapping that around, and I'm going to use some floral wire to firmly attach the Hello. Um, I did it nice and tight because the bottom wouldn't be attached, and I didn't, our, our front porch gets a lot of like wind and sun. So I wanted to kind of hold it in place. So I just used some floral wire to do so. And I almost went with a different wreath form from like the Dollar Tree, but I couldn't find it the day I went out looking for it. And I don't want to spend a lot of money on my wreaths. Like I said, my front porch gets so much sun that everything fades really quick. So I really like things that are inexpensive and um, that I can change up. And so I figured this grapevine wreath wouldn't look too bad even if it did get faded, faded, and if it did get too bad, I could also spray paint it to freshen it up. So I can change this out for the different seasons. Anyways, I am just attaching a scrap piece of like jute twine on the back, just tied it and then tied a little loop to hang it on my front door. So that's all I'm doing. I could have used wire, but I was trying to minimize things on the back of the wreath that could scratch my front door. So. I'm going to show it to you not hung up and then I will show it to you hung up, but I wasn't sure how well the shot would come out because it was going to be on a glass door. So that is how it came out. I do love it. And the wreath itself is pretty subtle, but the hello is nice and bright. And here is my little bird nest that made its home in an old rustic pot from the backyard. And I think I got the look that I was going for, even though it was a little journey to get there. And here's the house. That is it. So for this first one, I have this jar that had honey in it, and I have saved this for quite some time, and we are going to make a little honey jar out of it because, I mean, why not? So I chose this really bright yellow, actually it's called Bright Yellow by Apple Barrel, because I wanted it to match something else we'll be, some little bees we'll be using, but you could also make it more of like a golden honey color if you wanted. Um, I just went with this because I was using these little bees. So... I've done this technique before where you pour paint inside of a jar. I've done it multiple times. This was just, I don't know, really thick for me. So I kept adding in just a tiny, tiny bit of water. I didn't want it runny. And I shook it up. Of course, that made a little bit of bubbles in the paint. But um, I'm going to take you through the journey. It really came out great. Um, it just wasn't seeming to do what I thought it would do. But you want to pour the paint in. It probably is going to vary based on the type of paint. It's okay to thin it out, but like I said, do not thin it out very much. You don't want it watery or too, like, see-through. And ideally, you're just going to kind of hold the jar and turn it until it's all coated. It does take a little bit of time. Um, I'm obviously shaking the heck out of it. But, um, um, yeah, I didn't want <clears throat> too much paint in because you have to drain any extra paint out as well. I actually had a lot more extra in there than I thought thought I was going to when all was said and done. Um, so maybe I just forgot how patient I needed to be. I was showing you there the bubbles that had shown up from the shaking, but that actually all ended up going away. Um, it was not a problem at all in the end. But here I wasn't sure about it, so I was just thinking about it. So 
there's the slowly turning, just trying to make sure the um, last little bit is, you can see my, my face when I'm looking at stuff. Usually I don't get to see my face. I'm really concentrating. Um, wanting to turn it slowly to coat. This is quite sped up to coat every spot. And then once I felt like everything was well coated, we will, well, it wasn't quite yet. We're going to turn it upside down to drain out the excess paint. But um, I did want to mention that you could use any jar you had. You could use one of those little bear, like honey bear jars would be cute as well. You could use just a regular jar. You could use something from the Dollar Tree. They have all sorts out there. Um, but I like to save stuff from my kitchen when I see something that I think could be used. So I let it set a few times um, just to try to get the bubbles to go away. Once I felt like everything looked pretty good, I took it, I put it upside down in this container, left it for like a while, hours, overnight. Um, and then there was quite a bit of paint left that had come out. So then I put it in a cup which held it up um, away from what was pouring out because I didn't want it pooled around the rim. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and then I let it sit upright as well to dry out before I was closing it up. So it took a lot of time to dry, but the project itself was very easy to do. And then I'm sorry for the blurriness. This happens in a few of the frames and I'm not sure why. It didn't look like it to me when I was recording, but I guess I need to pay closer attention. The only thing I can think of is that it was having trouble focusing. Anyways, I'm using these black little letter stickers from the Dollar Tree. They also come in red and green, maybe something else. And I'm using the little hook tool. This is from the Dollar Tree, but I think it's supposed to replicate like a Cricut tool. And it's very, very handy for things like this. I kind of touch the end of the sticker with it and lay it down. And I'm just laying down the bottom of the stickers. I'm not pressing them all the way until I have them laid out. Then once it all looks straight and good, I'm pressing them down. Here I do decide to move the Y. But I just put on letters for sweet as honey. And the idea with painting the inside of the jar means that the paint isn't going to scratch off when you're doing stuff with it. Um, you can also Mod Podge the letters on top if you want. I did not. I know I Mod Podge everything, but I did not. I left the lid white because I liked it. And then I took these little V, uh, they do have a sticker on them. I don't think they're called stickers, but there was 12 in a pack at the Dollar Tree, which I thought was a really great value. Um, and then there's these little like foam stickers on the back, but I didn't want them elevated so, or raised. So I just pulled that off and I'm using a little bit of hot glue. And we're just going to put a couple of these on. I didn't do anything more than that. If you had a cute V-themed ribbon, you could tie that around the across the top. But I thought this was just good as is and would look really cute in a tiered tray. But I will show you the finished product um, at the end. I've been doing that lately. I don't know. Let me know. Do you guys like it or do you like to see the finished DIY after each project? All right. So moving on to the next one, I am taking a wooden skewer and some beads. And I just kind of went through what I had. Some were painted. Some were not. Um, and I'm getting six beads all together, two in three different sizes. So you can see them there. And then we're going to paint with the Harvest Orange by Apple Barrel. Now, I was going to use my chalk paint because I figured that would be easier to cover like that dark bead. But my orange paint was just about gone, my um, Waverly chalk paint, and it was completely dried up. There was hardly anything at the bottom. So... Hooray for using a complete bottle of paint, though. That, that's great. Um, so this took a couple of coats, especially on the dark bead. Um, I just let it dry in between. But there's lots of ways of, of painting beads. I'm using my hair dryer there in between. Um, but I wanted to try this one on the skewer, and it worked really good. And then once that was dry, we're going to move on. I pulled these green leaves. This was from my stash. I pulled them off of a flower pick, and then I pulled the little plastic piece at the bottom of them that like would put it onto the stem. I pulled that off too. And again, here's another blurry frame, frame, but I'm leaving it in so you can see what I'm, you can still see what I'm doing. It's just not as pleasant to look at. And sorry for the light beams there, but they poke through the blinds. Anyways, I kind of just pinched together the end. I ended up using the low temp on my um, glue gun, so I ended up just forgetting the protect finger protectors and going for it. But, um, I'm just tying the twine around the end of the greenery. We're making just the greenery for the top of a carrot, if you haven't figured that one out. 
And so I'm just kind of checking to see how it'll fit with the wooden bead. And I tie a little knot and put a little bit more glue in there. And then once I feel like that is nice and secure, we're going to just thread on our beads from biggest to smallest, um, just because that's the shape of a carrot. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a ton. It lets YouTube know that you like what I'm, you know, what I'm doing. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I like sharing easy, budget-friendly DIYs here on this channel using all sorts of budget-friendly items. So then at the end, I just tied a knot. And this was a very thin piece of twine. So I put a little bit of hot glue, but then I tied the knot like three more times, two or three more times to make sure that it was a nice big knot. And then I added a little bit more glue and trimmed off the end of the twine. Now I have seen these done many different ways on Pinterest and I've seen different types of greenery. I've seen the tops just being twine, um, leading a tail at the end with some twine. So many different ways you could do that. All right, so for our next and final DIY, I have this sign that I picked up from Hobby Lobby clearance. I paid 79 cents for it and it was a good firm piece, great structure. So that's pretty much what I look for. I'm going to sand this down so that the print doesn't poke through as much. I'm going to use my little vacuum to get the dust and use a baby wipe to clean it off. Now, I, if I had sanded it better, maybe a stronger, a higher grit, lower grit, a tougher sandpaper, I can never remember how that goes, or like a, an electric sander, I probably would have needed three coats of paint. But nonetheless, I painted this with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Just got my brand new bottle of white chalk paint. Um, so yeah, I'm actually using up some colors. That's nice. And I'm just going to let that thoroughly dry in between, but I just wanted a nice plain base for this project. This is going to be my Easter one, although I suppose the carrot one could be Easter too, although I like those more just like springy to me, but, um, or farmhouse, just like farmhouse C as well, I guess. Anyways, we're going to do a combo of rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and then some stickers. These particular stickers, I believe, are from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, I had previously painted some of them too. You can paint stickers. And I'm using my little tool once again to get them lined up. And I always start in the middle and work my way out if I want it centered. Um, that just helps. Once again, just push down the bottoms of the letters until you have them placed where you want them. And then we're going to apply our rub-on transfers. And when you're applying these, you just want to, some of them, these transferred really easy. Um, so I just using my little scraper tool, being very careful to not scrape the paint like outside of where the little transfer is that I'm doing. Um, and just pulling it up slowly to make sure it's all transferring well. And like I said, these ones transferred really, really easily. So I put on He is Risen, and I wanted I wanted to keep this one simple, but I did want something added on here. So I'm going in with a pencil. You do not have to be artistic. I'm not super artistic. But I had found an image of the, like, three crosses on the hill, kind of like an outline image, and just, I jotted it down, sketched it down on a piece of paper for me to look at while I did this. And then we're going to go in with the Hippie Acrylic Paint Markers. They sent those to me a couple months ago. I will leave a link for them down in the description box for you if you are interested and you just shake them up and that wasn't the first time I used this one so I didn't really have to work the paint down to the tip and drawing over but it's paint but I'm basically just drawing over my pencil marks and um, this was super easy to do I love these paint markers I need to use them more often and I just kind of Carefully, this is sped up. I took my time, went over them till I just had it looking the way I wanted. And I wasn't sure how thick I wanted to do, like the hill portion. So at one point, I paused and let the paint dry for a moment and then went and looked at a couple more images again. Here's a much clearer picture. See, that's focused nice. Um, just because I just wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it. So I just look at pictures to get ideas. And once the paint is dry, you could seal this whole thing with. Mod Podge if you wanted to keep help keep the stickers on, but I didn't. I just kind of did it like this. And I thought about adding some twine kind of wrapped around the edge of the sign or something just to add another detail, but I really just liked the simplicity of this one and left the message 
speak for itself, but there's lots of varieties of, of ways you could do this. So here is my He is Risen sign. I was pretty pleased with my little freehand drawing and how that came out and my little carrot. I have this displayed with a little moss bunny from Dollar Tree, but making a few of these um, would be really cute. I think I'll probably use this on a tiered tray um, with some spring stuff. So I thought that was fun and I would definitely make a few more of these. And our little honey jar. And I love how that one came out as well. Very perfect for a tiered tray. Up next on our DIYs, we've got this mason jar. This was just a, I think this was a spaghetti sauce jar. And I just like to save my jars and use them in my crafts. We're gonna clean it with some rubbing alcohol. This has of course been washed <laughs> since food was in it, but I like to clean that off so that there's no fingerprints and the paint will adhere better. And I have this pretty container of Serenity Blue and it's a nice chalk paint. And I bought it for some furniture and used it, but I've got quite a bit left, so I wanted to use it in this DIY. It's a really pretty, almost like a robin's egg color, and so I am kind of stippling it and brushing it. It's hard when painting with um, on glass to not get the streaks, and this is not a super great brush, but this is the one I used, and as you can see, bristles were falling out of it. One thing I've learned, and if I were to do this again, I would definitely do more of the pouncing motion or spray paint, but the pouncing motion just works better when painting on glass. But in the end, I got it done. We did a couple coats of this and just got a nice coverage on it. And then I wanted to do a speckled look, so I'm just taking my stencil brush and a little bit of brown paint. Just be careful, protect your work surface, especially if you're doing this inside. And we're gonna give this a speckled look. And this is, um, uh, if you have a hard time with that, you can thin out your paint a little bit with a little bit of water, but just be careful. If it's too thin, it will definitely splatter more. But I thought this was just a very simple DIY. Um, it looks very springy because of the color. And in the end, I decided to cover it with a Mod Podge as well. I just like to do that with glass or metal because it's just more likely, at least in my experience, to chip off. Um, I don't know, and I just figure why not do that to be sure. Um, so give that a good coat of Mod Podge, but use any jar you have lying around, recycle, reuse, save yourself some money. Um, yeah, so we're going to give this a little bit of trim. I've got this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It was a nice little pack that came in like three different designs and I'm just gonna hot glue a little bit to the top of the rim. This isn't necessary, this is just a nice little detail using a finger protector because it will come right through the ribbon. And I just wrapped it around a couple times because I wanted it to be a little bit thicker and not quite as sheer and it's a very, very thin ribbon. Um, but you could use, of course, anything that you had on hand. I very rarely buy stuff specifically for a DIY. I usually have stuff that I like and then I figure out a DIY from that. I'm making a simple little shoestring bow out of that ribbon as well and I'm going to attach that to the front. And then just add in a little bit of greenery, and this is a very cute spring vase. Uh, I feel like it'd be cute on a shelf even without anything inside of it as well, but um, I had some to put in there, so I did, and I love how this one came out. Very bright and spring-like. This next DIY, this was a sign, I think from a pack I picked up from Christmas, Happy or uh, dollar, oh my goodness, clearance, Walmart, it was like a Christmas shelf, uh, tier tray set. Anyways, it's just a sign, we're gonna redo it. Using my hair dryer to heat up the glue to get the sticker off, sanding it down to smooth it off, because we're gonna use the back, it's just easier than using the front because it's a cleaner slate. So um, sand it off any of the extra sticky residue and then we're gonna go in with more of that Serenity Blue and we're gonna give this a good coat. I'm just gonna do the sides and the back and then we'll cover the front in just a second here. And we're just gonna give that a couple of coats. Maybe I only did one coat, I'm not totally sure. Um, but you know, you always do however many coats you need to. It depends on what you're painting and what paint you're using, what paintbrush you're using, the, the type of surface you're using. You know, just paint it until it looks good. I'm remembering now that this paintbrush left a lot of streaks, so I did have to do a couple of coats to smooth that out. A different paintbrush would have been better. So once I was done painting it and it was all dry, I did go over it with some sandpaper and lightly sanded it to smooth it out. That also helped 
with those really bad brush uh, brush strokes from that awful paintbrush. So I sanded it, smoothed it out, cleaned up all of the dust, and then I went in with this brown paint that I had, acrylic paint, and I'm just doing very little on my paintbrush. We're going to kind of highlight the edges. You don't have to do this. I like the kind of distressed look. I like the different textures. I don't like just a flat look, but you do what you like. And then I went across the um, surfaces as well with just a very light dry brush just to give a little bit more depth to the piece. And then I've got these stickers that I think are from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree are the two places I typically buy my stickers. And I am just going to place them on. I try to just do them very gently until I have them in place. That way I can move them if need be. Some stickers that doesn't work well with, but some do. So just don't like, you know, do too much um, too quickly you know, pushing them down too much until you're absolutely sure. This one I'm not centering. Um, I did it off to the side. I thought it was easier than centering and I liked the way it looked. So then I'm going to seal the stickers in with some Mod Podge, but we're also going to just do the whole thing because the Mod Podge will change up the finish. So you want to just put it on the whole thing, even if the whole thing doesn't need to be sealed in. It just looks better that way. And then I didn't love the starkness of the white stickers, so I went over with a little bit more of that brown paint to dry brush over it to make it blend in since I put the stickers on after I'd done that to the rest of it. And then we're gonna cover up the back with some Mod Podge and some paint, or some Mod Podge and some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. You could paint this, you could sand it down, but this was just an easy way of doing it. So Mod Podge, take some scrap, scrap of scrapbook paper that I had and smooth that out. This is a really, really thick, like cardstock stuff, so um, I don't have to worry about wrinkling or anything. So I put a good amount of Mod Podge, rolled that out with my briar, and then trimmed off the extra. And then the back looks nice and finished, and you'll never know well, what's going on underneath there. And then I did seal in the back with some Mod Podge as well, although I don't know if that was necessary. But once that was dry, I was able to use my nail file to sand away from the paper to just clean up the edges from what I had trimmed off just to smooth it out a little bit more, make sure there was no paper hanging off. And then I'm going to take some twine, some jute, uh, is this jute twine? I think it is considered, no, this is baker's twine. And I wrapped that around several times and then just took a little sprig of, this was probably a floral from the Dollar Tree. And I was going to tie that on and then I wanted to get rid of all the fuzzies um, on the twine and uh, used a lighter for that. And then I tucked the little floral pick in there as well. I thought that looked, that looked cute with the word bloom and then I use a little bit of hot glue because um, the twine wasn't really holding it in place it just looks like it's holding it in place so I use some hot glue to secure it and I loved how this one came out. Up next I'm going to be taking this house that I had previously done something with already you can see the snowflake had broken and so I was like I might as well just redo this so I have a couple extra steps because I don't have a fresh one. I think this one was originally from a set from the Target dollar spot but Dollar Tree often has like wood house shapes, um, but because I was using one I would already redone, I needed to get the snowflake sticker off and paint this house. Um, this one is nice because it does have a little chimney on it, but one without the chimney would work as well. Um, and it took a little bit more, well maybe it didn't take more paint because I was painting over the black. I don't really remember, um, but get a house, paint it white. We're gonna be using some rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, a really pretty spring one. And they just pop better typically. I guess it depends on the transfer. But I thought it would pop really good off of white. So that's why I did white versus a color um, because I wanted the rub-on transfers to stand out. Once our paint house was all painted and dry, I have these rub-on transfers, like I said, from the Dollar Tree. And it was a pretty good fit width-wise for the sheet and the house. But I just figured out where I wanted to place it. And we're just going to lay that on there and transfer the transfer. Very simple. Um, some rub-on transfers kind of transfer. I feel like I'm saying transfer so many times, but some of them transfer more easily than others, but I'm just using a little scraper tool. You can use a popsicle stick. Um, peel it up very slowly in case some of the pieces do not transfer. You can just lay it back down, as you can see I'm doing, and rub it a little bit more. The paint was dry, um, but it may have not been as set and that might have transferred a little bit easier, but all in all, it transferred fairly easily. And all we're gonna do for this one is wrap some of that tan and white 
uh, baker's twine around it. I believe that is from the Dollar Tree as well. Um, and just add that little detail on there. Nothing fancy. We're just going to wrap it around a couple times and tie a little bow. And I wanted all of these DIYs. I have a set of them here that all go together just so then it's fun to decorate with them that way. And now I've got this Dollar Tree yard stake, garden stake bicycle. Thought it was really cute, but we're going to change it up to just match everything else that I'm making. And I'm just going to very carefully bend off the stake part. So this little stick and be careful for the metal will have some sharp edges. And if you need to, you can try heating it up a little bit with like a heat gun or a hairdryer. And then we're going to paint this. It was very cute colors, but I wanted it to match my own um, decor. So I'm just painting it. We're going to paint, paint it away until we have the colors you want. So nothing super complicated, but then we're going to add this to a wreath. You could also leave it on the yard stake and paint it and then stick it in like a planter or of course just the yard itself. Um, but I thought this would be a cute spring touch for a wreath. I thought that in order to get better coverage, it would be best to paint everything in white and then any colors I was going to be using to go back over that because most of the paint I'm using is going to be an acrylic paint. So I'm doing this with a white chalk paint, painting everything, and then um, it just kind of primes up the area for the other colors. Some of it will leave in white, um, and this actually is a chalk paint as well. Um, I'm just going to touch up the seat of the bike seat because I had gotten a little bit of white paint on it. And then um, the blue underneath there, I just didn't want you to see any of that because I wanted the colors to coordinate. So then I have this paint from Ceramico, I think is what it's called. And um, it is a plaid product. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint our flowers and just paint all of the details in the different colors. But like I said, the white chalk paint added a nice base and gave really good coverage so that I didn't have to do a bunch of coats of the acrylic paint. I think if I hadn't done that and used that kind of as a primer that I would have taken more coats of this acrylic paint just because it's thinner and I was painting over a really bright uh, saturated color. And I forgot, I did decide to paint the seat, the bike seat blue. This is what happens when you craft. Sometimes you're not sure exactly what you're doing going into it. And um, then as you get going, you, you know, change your mind. Um, so as you could see on the seat, I had to do a couple coats of paint because I, it was a black base. Um, but here as I'm adding the blue handlebars, I didn't need to do as much. So that's just proved the point that I said earlier that the white paint acted as a good um, primer. But all in all, I got it painted the colors I wanted and we're gonna seal that with some Mod Podge because paint scraping off of metal just seems to happen. So we're gonna cover all of this with Mod Podge and let that dry. Also because of how we are going to attach this to the wreath, we're gonna be using some metal floral wire and it probably would have scraped off the paint just in that simple process. So I'm gonna take a wreath that I already have on hand. I think I got these from Aldi, actually. I have a few of them. Um, but I'm just going to take some floral wire and attach it where it makes sense to attach it to the wreath. And this is a very easy way to take a basic wreath. I still didn't spend a lot of money on it. I think I got it um, on clearance at Aldi. But um, take a basic wreath that maybe you did spend more than a couple bucks on from the Dollar Tree. Um, and you can switch it up with little things that you pick, do pick up from the Dollar Tree. I think that's a great way to do it. And it was very easy to attach. And with it just being on with floral wire, it'll be very simple for me to take that off and use it again. I am tucking in the ends of the floral wire into the wreath so I don't scratch my door. But that is how this wreath came out and I love it. All right, so starting off for this first one, this is a piece I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And it's pretty cute on its own. You could just put a picture on that little clip, but this is a crafting channel. So we do crafts. <laughs> I'm using my hair dryer to heat up the sticker to take off the back. Uh, heat up the, yeah, to take it off the back. That made sense. I think it made sense. Sienna, to try to sand off some of the stickiness. I'm going to end up painting everything, but I wasn't really sure in the beginning because I start out my projects I'm a little unsure where I'm going to head with it. So took off the little clip, sanded the hole, and we're going to paint this with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Fern. Now all of these colors I'm going to do pretty messy until the end. We're going to be going for a like chippy, rustic 
farmhouse, whatever adjective you want to use, old um, look to this. So I have seen some old chippy things with like the green coming through and I really like that look. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for in a couple of these today. Um, so I'm going to paint this and then I'm painting like all of the inside edges pieces, which is just like an MDF finish that I'm, I'm painting kind of roughly um, because we won't be doing our chippy technique on those spots. So I'm just giving it a, a rough color. And at this point, I didn't want all of the green to get on the back piece since you can just kind of see through this item and that is why I have a piece of paper there. And then I'm just taking a, what did I even just say there? Wow guys, I'm struggling with my words but I'm not starting this over. So I'm just taking a candle and we're rubbing the wax on different parts of this. And this is one way to get the chippy look. And then we're going to go over with mineral, Waverly Chalk Paint in the color mineral. And we're going to paint the same, kind of a rough, not, you know, amazing coat um, of paint. Um, we're going to just do the same thing again. So we're going to paint with the mineral on the surface. And then in between all of the little edges, we'll just do kind of like a rough, coverage there, not worried about a super amazing coverage. We're gonna do the candle wax again, and basically wherever you put the candle wax, you're gonna see it will hinder the paint from sticking. So hopefully you'll understand that at the end. Um, you do wanna make sure your paint is thoroughly dry, obviously, before you do the candle wax, so you're not just pulling the paint off. And then we're going in with our top coat, which is Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. I'm gonna do a bit of a better coating here, although all of the little inside pieces and all of the little holes of the window, I guess you could say, that I'm still just kind of doing a little bit of a rough coat because I want a little bit of the mineral, a little bit of the fern color to kind of peek through so that it's kind of got a little bit of everything showing there. And then I decided that I wanted to paint the whole back. And as you can see, like the inside of the kickstand, so to speak, because you're just going to see it right through it. So I did not worry about distressing the back at all, but the front we are, and I'm going in with my little scrapey tool, and I'm just scraping off Mainly where I'm trying to remember, you know, where the wax is or just kind of the whole thing, but it's going to really pull up where the wax is and this will reveal the different layers of the paint. And I'm emphasizing where I emphasize the act, the wax, which is, I said axe, not wax, um, which is a lot on like the, the ridges, the edges, the, like that's where I feel like natural distressing would occur. So that's what I was going for. And then also went over roughly with some sandpaper as well, just to kind of rough up more if I could. And then we're just going to give it a wipe down with a baby wipe to get off all of that um, dust and debris. And then I'm going to just poke in the hole that was there originally with a little sharp tool. We're not putting the little clip back on though. I wanted a screw and the one that was in there was too small for what I wanted. So Whenever I take things apart, I save all the pieces and keep them in my craft supply. So I pulled out a screw and we're just going to put that in, not all the way. Um, I just wanted something to hang a little wreath on. So that's what I'm going for here. Now the wreath that I'm using was off of something at some point, but it's, I don't know, it's not that great. So I'm going to add to it with this leaf garland. This is a, or I think it's like a, this might've been in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. I'm not really sure. Um, but I've been using it for a while and I'm just going to add to my existing wreath, but you could always just make a wreath just out of this um, or use anything your little heart desires. But I just wanted to kind of add to it a little bit and we're going to make ourselves a little wreath, trim that off. It is wired, so it just wraps around really easily. And then I want to make a little bit of a bow. Sorry for the lighting change. I did this over a course of many days. This is why it took me so long to get this video out. It's been a little while since I've had one. So thanks for your patience with me. I like to put out one video a week, but that hasn't been happening. So I made a little bow out of that lace ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I could have just hooked the wreath itself on the screw, but I felt like it was gonna not go on as easy. So I'm just gonna use a piece of floral wire, feed that through and make a little loop and trim that off. We will use that to hang that on, and I will show you the finished product at the end. So for this next DIY, this little easel, chalkboard easel, I believe it was from Dollar General. It was a dollar, and I probably paid less than that. Um, but Dollar Tree has had similar items, and I'm just using these gold butterfly rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. 
I love these little pink handled scissors. They might have had different colors as well, but they are from the Dollar Tree in their Crafter Square area. They're little tiny precision scissors, and it's very handy for these types of things. So I'm going to just tell you that I struggled with this. And you can't even see it totally well because there's reflection on the plastic covering of the rub-on transfer. I don't know if the issue was the chalkboard finish that I was doing this on. Um, these particular transfers don't have a lot of stickiness to them. So as I was rubbing it on, it was shifting and then I was trying to place it back to where it was to continue. So yeah, this DIY is literally just putting transfers on this sign. Um, and I do like how it came out. I think it's going to be really a really cute um, filler piece, probably to be used on a tiered tray is kind of my thoughts. And it's nice to have stuff that doesn't have words in it. Sorry, my head. I was really focusing on this, guys, so I kept getting in the way of the camera. And uh, But once I started here, I was like, I like these rub-on transfers. This labor of love is going to continue. And I continued until I got a few of them on there. So I do like how it came out. Um, the gold rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree definitely are not as easy as some of the, of the other ones. But I'm going to show you me using these on the next DIY as well, just so that you um, can see that they're not always as difficult to use. But they were still a little bit of a challenge. So that is it for this one. I'll uh, give you another glimpse of it at the end as well. All right, so for this next one, I'm using the sign that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on clearance. But there are similar shaped and size signs um, at Dollar Tree. So once again, I changed my mind on some of this. So we're going to start by giving it a coat of Waverly Chalk paint in the color ink, which I do think was a good choice because it probably covered the writing in the back better than white, but you're going to see a drastic change in appearance here. So giving this a coat of Waverly Chalk paint in ink on the inside and the whole frame. All right, so moving on. I was going to go for more of the similar look of the, the first piece. So I'm going in with some Waverly Chalk Paint in Fern. And yeah, we're going to just, we're just going to skip past some of this. So now I'm going in with, with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. I do a couple coats of that. I was trying to go for another way to get some of this like chippy, rustic, old look. And it worked, but... I don't think I did it the best way. But you know, sometimes I just like to just try things. I fly by the seat of my pants when I do my crafting, in case you haven't figured that out. And then I was like, I don't really want to do the black. I thought I was going to do the black because I was going to do all those gold butterflies. And I liked how it looked in the packaging contrast against the black. But then I didn't like it. So then I went in with white. So the inside, we're just going to give that a couple of coats of white. And then once everything was dry, I tried to, to sand off the edges for some of that black and green to pull through, which did work on the edges. So it wasn't like it was a total loss. It definitely still rust, uh, rustic, I was going to say rustic -ed it up, but that's definitely not a word. But I think you can make up words. Um, I, that's what I've seen. Rustic. I rusti rustified it. Rust I made it rustic. So there you go. You can see. The colors did come through, and I do like how it came out. So now what I'm going to do is put the gold butterfly rub-on transfers around the frame of this. And it did transfer easier than on the chalkboard sign, but they still just do not have any, like a lot of the other ones have more stickiness when you put them down. These just want to shift on you. So I still like them, but it's a lot more work than the other ones. So if, if, if you have them already, you can make it happen, but just know that it's going to be a little bit more work. They also have these little flower pieces on there, and I just kind of did these around the whole thing. I did curve some of the butterflies kind of like over the edge, wrapped it around a little bit. Um, I just kind of wanted um, a little glimpse, glimpse of them on the frame. And I do, like I said, I like how it came out. But hang with me. We got more on this journey because this thing takes a lot of different turns. So that is how the frame came out. Love that. So far, so good. Then I take this stencil from the Dollar Tree and I was going to do the It's Good to Be Home. And the words themselves fit in there, but the stencil itself did not. So I had to bend it, which is fine. It's a flexible stencil. Um, I could have trimmed the edges, but I didn't want to mess it up. I've used the stencil before. I will plan to use it again. So I just maneuver in there, tape it down. And I thought, I'll go in with these 
paint markers, I will have less bleed through. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I also wasn't glad that I chose black. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't coming together how I wanted it to. But we're going we're gonna to paint it here. And um, then I'm going to fill in the gaps on the words on the top because I just I wasn't giving up on it yet. And then I finally said, nope, not, not happy with it. There's a lot of bleed through on the M and the E on home, which you can't really see, but there was. So I go back through, I sand that down in the middle, cover it again with some white paint, and we're just going to do a very, very light dry brush of the color firm, just to kind of tie in the background with the edges. Guys, I sat on this project for a couple days because I was just like, I had this idea in my mind, but it was just like a general idea and I could not figure out how to make it happen. But I did make it happen. I found these word rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree in my stash. It was just a whole sheet of random words that I've been using. I don't have a lot of them left. And when I think of butterflies, I really wanted to do butterflies. I don't know why. It's not like butterflies has always been my thing. But I like butterflies. I think they're beautiful. I think um, they scream spring. And anyways, I think their transformation is beautiful and, I don't know, symbolic in a lot of ways. Anyways. I picked out Discover the Journey because the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly is an amazing journey and the beauty on the other side is just awesome. So that's what I'm going with. And I, then I picked up these stickers from the Dollar Tree. They have a ton of these. These are like some 3D pop-out ones. I, they have a lot, of, some with like a lot more gold. I wasn't really going for that, but I love these ones. I love the colors of these, but there was probably like half a dozen different ones to choose from, literally. So I just picked out the ones I liked the best. I'm using a little bit of like a tacky glue. I don't know, the sticker on the back of these might be good enough, but I didn't want to risk it. So I just put on some glue there as well. Back to the one that was kind of a fail, but I will still definitely use this as a filler piece on a tiered tray. And then these are the two winners of the show to me. I'm very pleased with how these both came out. The little window frame with the wreath and then my butterfly sign. I know there's a shadow on there, but I do love how this came out. All right, so for this first one, this is a glass vase jar that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It was probably 49 cents, I think. I picked it up on clearance, and I'm just cleaning it with some rubbing alcohol. But you can use any jar you've already got, something from the Dollar Tree, something that you've thrifted, whatever. Um, and now I'm just going to give this a couple coats of a Waverly chalk paint in the color white. It did take a couple of coats to just get a really nice coverage. Um, just make sure you let it fully dry in between so that it, you don't pull the paint back off the glass. But um, this does hold really well. And um, yeah, I did a couple of coats. Probably, I think I ended up doing three coats all together just to make sure that it was a really nice coverage. We're going to use a self-adhesive stencil from the Dollar Tree. I will say it is very sticky, which is good. It didn't pull the paint up or anything. This one is a really fine detail of it, and so I had to be really careful. It was kind of delicate. It didn't go all the way around, but I actually really liked how it looked. I felt like it still looked nice in the back. And I just wrapped this around, got it as straight as I could, and then we're going to stencil it. I'll show you this color paint um, on another one of the DIYs. I used the same one throughout the whole video. The key, of course, as always, is to make sure you do not have too much paint on your brush. I am using a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree for this DIY and just, yeah, I didn't use too much. I did go back over a couple spots a couple times um, because I just didn't want to use too much paint at once. But this help, help oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time with my words. The self-adhesive stamp does work, or oh my goodness, self-adhesive stencil. I could redo this, but I'm not going to. Um, did a really good job at not letting any bleed through. You just have to be careful pulling it off so you don't rip the stencil at all. And I'm going to show you um, just how I'm cleaning it. I'm just using a baby wipe right afterwards to get it off. It's just easier to do while the paint is still fairly wet and then putting it back on the um, thing that it came from. I just wanted to show you the back side of this and I thought it really came out cute. I'll show this to you again at the end. Um, you could seal it with some Mod Podge also if you wanted as well. For this next DIY, I have this tag ornament from Dollar General. It was originally a dollar, but I got it on clearance. Probably paid 10 cents, maybe 20 cents. I don't know, but not very much. And I'm going to pull the the hanger in the back with the beads off. It was just stapled in, so when I pull that off, 
I'd use just a small flathead screwdriver to pull that out. And then I'm just sanding down the little holes. We're going to use the back side here. So I think I did end up, I don't think I ended up showing it to you. I started by painting it with a Waverly Chalk Paint and White. And then I went in with some spackling because you could still kind of see the holes. And then I painted it again. So just to put that in there for you. We will cover the front, which is now going to be the back with some scrapbook paper at the end. But right now we're just going to paint this whole thing with Waverly Chalk Paint in White. I'm going to paint the edges as well as this back, which is now our front. And that did take a couple of coats. Now we're going to use these health adhesive stamps. Oh my goodness, stencils. Keep doing that. From Dollar Tree. Sorry, this got a little blurry. I think my head kept getting in the way, so it was getting it out of, out of focus. These are from the Jot line. So this is from the like stationary office area of Dollar Tree, not like the Crafter Square. And we're just going to use these individual letters. I like the font on this a lot and the natural spacing that happens because of I just had them end to end. Um, I really liked how it looked, but you could of course let it dry and like overlap the stencils a little bit to make the letters closer. I hope I'm making sense. This one was a little harder to not get any paint outside of the stencil, but I did not actually get any bleed through. Uh, but you can see a little bit around the outside of the squares. These are very fragile. Once again, the um, uppercase B on the right here, you can see there's a blank there because I ripped that one and could not use it. So these are very fragile, um, but they worked really well. Um, I have to grab the D here just for a placement so that I can clean the E and the S and put them down again because I do need them. <laughs> again, I'm just going to write blessed on here. So my general thought of this uh, stamp or this stencil, I don't know why I keep saying stamp, um, this stencil along with the last one, the self-adhesive ones work really good as far as not having any bleed through. They are very fragile. If you're doing a lot of projects or large projects, like or you're doing numerous things to like sell or something, um, you may want a higher quality stencil. Here I am just going in with some white paint to clean up the um, edges there. My stencil brush was just a little bit bigger than the stencil itself. But I think for like small DIY projects, these stencils are really pretty good. Um, just be careful, like I said, they're fragile. I don't expect to be able to use them a ton of times before I'm likely to have ripped them. <laughs> But I do feel like I'll be able to use them multiple times. And for, I got them both when they were only a dollar. But even for $1.25, I still feel like it's pretty good value. I'm going in with a little bit more of that pink salmon color on my brush. And I'm not really distressing it because distressed wouldn't be in this color. But I'm highlighting the edges. And I'm also dragging it across the top a little bit. Just to bring in a little bit more dimension and not have like the flat white. I just thought that was a nice touch. I'm going to go in on the back with some just a glue stick and some scrapbook paper. I'm using a pretty thick cardstock from Hobby Lobby. I have a ton of this from a pack that I purchased. I am making sure it's kind of straight because I want the planks to be straight. Um, but this is a really thick one. It does not like wrinkle very easily at all. I'm going to let that set for a minute before I trim it. So while that is just setting, the glue is drying just a little bit. I pulled off the beads that were on it, and I didn't really feel like painting any beads, so I just went through what I had, and I had a few white beads and some natural beads, and we're going to string this up to make a little tag. So I'm using some, just some white jute, I think is what it was, or white, I don't know. It's from the Dollar Tree, um, and I'm just going to put some tape on the end so that it's easy to thread the beads. I just created a very simple pattern, two natural, one white, um, and I did that a couple of times. And that's kind of all there is for that. Now you can make a tassel on this. I'm not, I'm kind of making it similar to how it was. So the one end I'm going to hang, uh, make a little loop. You could hang this if you wanted, or you could just lay it on a tiered tray. Like I said, if you want, you can put a tassel on the other end of this, however you want to do that. But I'm just going to tie a knot, create a little loop here. Once again, this got out of focus, I think because of my head. We're back to the tag. We're going to just trim off the paper. I'm just using a sharp cutting tool and a little cutting mat. This little cutting mat is very handy. It is from the Dollar Tree. Just to trim off the rest of this and then I will go in with my nail file or sandpaper you can use just sanding away from the paper so that you don't pull it back up to clean up the edges. So to attach this, 
This was stapled on the original. Um, you could do that as well. You could also drill a hole if you want. I'm just tying a knot a few times here at the end. The string I was using was pretty thin compared to the hole on the beads. So I had to put, I don't know, three or four knots overlapping to just make it big enough to hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna attach this on the back um, with a piece of tape. But for a more finished look, you could staple it or like I said, drill a hole in it. But um, I tend to take apart my DIYs and redo them because I do a lot of DIYs for my channel. So I just thought this was simple and you can't tell that it's tape anyway. We'll once again show this to you at the end. For our last DIY, this is also I think from Dollar General. It was a dollar, but I'm sure I got it on clearance. And we're gonna just cut off the string. And uh, this was actually stapled on. Dollar General's dollar items are put together much better than other Dollar Tree items as far as things being even, well secured. <laughs> so anyways, I just used my little um, wire cutters, I think is what they are, to pull that off. And then I'm using my hair dryer to kind of soften up the glue. My hair dryer's heating element went on it. So I think I'm gonna actually have to buy an actual heat gun. But I was man I managed to save the snowflake, but not the Noel. Um, and then we're going to just sand that down and give this a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint. Once again, in the color white, I was kind of matching, making these all match, like to go together. So you, of course, don't have to do that. You can do them all different, um, obviously, with whatever colors you want. Um, I, I do paint the edges and then the top, and I'm going to give that a couple of coats. And then I got a little bit of paint on the back, which I really didn't want to paint the back. So I just used my nail file to kind of sand off that paint and clean up the backside a little bit. Obviously, you don't have to do that. Now, these stencils, I believe, are from Hobby Lobby. They, they are phenomenal. Um, I need to use these more often. They stick really good. They're large. So um, here's the paint I'm using. Ceramico in the color um, Salmon. And this is from the company Plaid. And which is the same one as like Apple Barrel and Waverly and lots of paints that you probably use are all in the from the company Plaid. So we're once again going in with our stencil brush. You don't want to go too thick with your paint so you don't have any bleed through. I didn't want the gaps in the letter that the stencil provided so I'm just going in with a small paintbrush. We're filling that in and cleaning up the edge. Once again, my head pops in, makes it go <laughs> out of focus. Goodness, guys. Okay. So we're just going to clean that up. And then we're doing another, another self-adhesive stencil from Dollar Tree just for this little heart on the top. So, okay, I would say the same thing as I said on the other one, that this is a really nice stencil. It sticks really well. The problem with it is that it's one whole sheet. <laughs> so it's kind of awkward to, like, use unless you're using the whole thing at once. And then I'm just trying to figure out something to wrap around the top of this little house. I just felt like it needed something. I just kind of pulled out everything that I thought might work. I wanted to do the green leaves, but they were way too big. So I'm gonna use this, uh, I think it's called Berry Garland is the name of it from Hobby Lobby, or not, well, Hobby Lobby sells it. Mine is from the Dollar Tree, and they sell it at different times of year in different colors. I'm just using the white one. I am going around the edges and kind of distressing that, um, just sanding that off a little bit to bring in some of that wood that was underneath. And then I'm just wrapping this around. This is a wired garland. And so I did not use any hot glue. Sorry, went out of frame. I did not use any um, hot glue or anything like that, but you certainly could do that if you wanted. But I just wrapped it around a couple times and used the wire to wrap, um, up, wrap it up kind of with itself. So for this last one, I'm using some, just a, it's more that, um, cardstock that I had from Hobby Lobby. I just am using the back side of it because I wanted a white piece of paper. And this is a flexible stencil from um, Dollar Tree. I've used this before. I really do like this one. I used that salmon color for the center and I just mixed a couple of greens that I had on hand to make a color that I liked for the vine. The brush I had for this made it a little bit harder to not have any bleed through because so I was just trying to use a smaller brush. Um, but it wasn't too bad and I go for a little bit more rustic look so You know doesn't have to be perfect and I'm just going to cut this out Using my paper cutter 
you can use your scissors, but we're just going to cut this out to size. I started out bigger um, and then worked my way down because I didn't want to cut off too much and uh, have to redo it. And then I'm just using this cute little frame from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm leaving it as is. It's got this little clip and this burlap bow at the top. And I just wanted to put a little picture in there that I knew I could change out um, anytime. So this is not permanent. I can use this for anything I want to, in the future. And um, so I'm just trimming it up to get to a good size to, to fit in that frame well. And that is it for this DIY. For this DIY, I have this sign from the Dollar Tree. This is really cute and kind of nice um, on its own, but we're going to DIY it because that's what we do on this channel. But I liked the wood framing of it, and so I wanted to tape that off to make sure that we didn't get any paint on it so that I could still use that. And the white part with the words is elevated. It's raised up from the wood base. So it's got a nice like three-dimensional thing here. So we're going to cover this with some white Waverly chalk paint. We do need to do a couple of coats. So I'm going to use my heat gun to dry the paint in between. I probably could have seen this to start and that might have given me, given me coverage a little bit uh, quicker, but just do however many coats until the words are all covered up. This was getting pretty streaky. So once it was dry, I sanded it down with a sanding block just to smooth out some of the streaks and wipe off all of the dust and then we're going to do another coat. But just some ideas if you have a piece that you're trying to make over and maybe it's not going quite the way you wanted to at first, there's other things you can do to help make it happen. Once it's all dry, we're going to peel off our painter's tape and voila, the wood does not have any paint on it and it looks perfect. <laughs> so we're going to take these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I believe everything I'm using on this one came in the same pack and we're just going to transfer them. Now the rub-on transfers, they are not all created equal. I've not used any that are not from the Dollar Tree, um, but even the ones from there are not all the same. The gold ones are very hard to transfer, but this one fa transferred fairly easily. It also depends on the surface that you are doing it on. Um, so just take your time, use a little tool. This is like a little, like, uh, mimicking a Cricut tool. It's from the Dollar Tree. I don't have a Cricut, um, but this works as well as like a popsicle stick. Sometimes I can just do it with my fingernail, but we're going to rub that on, peel off the top piece, and it's very, came out perfectly. And then you do wipe the top of it with that sheet. It's called like burnishing, I think. It helps kind of uh, set it in. And then we're going to give this a coat of Mod Podge just to seal them in. Uh, maybe not necessary to do, but I did it. And that's all we're going to do for that one. I'll show you that one at the end of this little set of DIYs. For our next one, I've got this house. This was from Hobby Lobby on clearance. I guess they had a lot of the letter X left. And I think I picked up a couple of them. Um, I sanded it down just a little bit to lighten up the lettering to make it easier to cover. And we're going to give this a couple coats of a Waverly chalk paint in the color Celery. Dollar Tree has had very, very similar houses to this. Um, probably other craft stores as well, or you could use a scrap piece of wood if you have a saw and just cut it down. Would not be hard to do, but I love these little house signs. Once I've got a couple coats on and it is all dry, we're going to go in with, now these are not a rub-on transfer, these are a wall art sticker from the Dollar Tree, um, but they're really nice. They do stick pretty good, um, so I'm just going to put a couple of these on here, smoothing out any air bubbles, making sure it looks nice and smooth. But I don't do a lot of gold, but sometimes it's a nice little touch. And um, I like the butterflies for spring with the color of celery. I think it's a nice combo. I added, wanted to add another butterfly. It just wasn't quite fitting exactly because of the space that was left. So I just put on, uh, made sure the parts that I wanted to be on it were on it. And then I just took some scissors and trimmed off the edge. And I thought that still looked really good, um, you know. Other signs and things you buy in the store are like that, where sometimes an image isn't completed. So I just got that nice and trimmed down. I love these little precision scissors from the Dollar Tree. They help out. And I did that for the top one as well. And then we're going to seal these in with some Mod Podge. I don't know that that was necessary, but it did help tone down the shininess because I used a matte Mod Podge. So the shininess from the stickers, the Mod Podge did help tone that down. And I went ahead and did the sides as well, just because I wanted the finish of the whole piece to be the same. For this next one, I've got this metal sign 
from the Dollar Tree. That is the name of the game. Lots of Dollar Tree stuff going on here. And uh, we're going to just take off the twine. These are really nice um, because you can just, they have like a plastic end to them and you can just push them through and then um, we'll reattach this at the end as well. We're going to give this a couple coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Celery. That is a theme for me, a color that I use often, but it's really pretty to me. Um, it's like a color, but still a neutral. I feel like a lot of things go with it. So it adds color into my home while not making me feel like I can't mix in other colors. So we're going to do a light sanding, very, very light because paint does come off metal easily, but it was kind of streaky. And I think that's why I did this here. Um, so I wanted to get some of that out and then went in with another coat. I don't know why, probably the paintbrush I'm using, um, or maybe the paint was getting old and a little bit thicker, but in the end, we got what we needed. So I've got these gold rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. So these gold ones aren't as rough as the shinier gold ones they have. Um, I don't know how to really explain it otherwise, but you'll see those in a second. Then I have these faux leather words. These are from Hobby Lobby from fall time. Um, I picked them up when they were marked down. And in my opinion, the word blessed is not an isolated fall Thanksgiving word. So I'm just incorporating that here. And I liked the tan color of it. I thought that was um, went well with the celery. And it's kind of hard to see because the reflection from the rub-on transfer like top sheet. But I just put those little leaves um, various places throughout. I set the blessed word down just so I could figure out where I wanted the placement of them. And then I'm going to give this a nice coat of Mod Podge. Even if it wasn't for the transfer, um, Mod Podge, when you paint a metal piece, is a good idea to help prevent it from chipping off. Then once that was dry, I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to get my letter, my word into place. And I did the center at first so that I wouldn't have to worry about it like shifting on me and me actually hot gluing it in the wrong spot. Now my Mod Podge looks a little streaky here as well. So I'm pretty sure um, it was a paintbrush. A uh, bigger paintbrush is better. And I, you know, I learn along the way. And then we're just gonna reattach our little twine hanger piece. And I'm gonna just take a baby wipe and a little scraper tool to clean off any paint that got on the back. I didn't uh, wanna paint it, but I did want it to look finished in case you could see it from the other side. This would be cute hung inside a wreath or just on a door. For this next project, I have this cutting board from Hobby Lobby. Once again, buy it when it's marked down and on clearance. And I thought the little imprint here was like, um, it was texture, it was like raised or indented, I don't remember, but I sanded it down a little bit to help um, make sure it wouldn't show through the paint. We're gonna give this a coat of, this was, I believe that was Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Silver Lining, if I remember correctly. And we're gonna just give this a good coat. I think it only took one coat, but you know, do, what, do whatever it takes for you. <laughs> Once that paint was thoroughly dry, I grabbed some painter's tape and we're gonna make a nice little pattern here and I'm even getting out my little what is that called it's leaving my mind there's a name for that type of ruler um, oh man it's totally left me anyways to make sure that it was even <laughs> and we're gonna go in with the Waverly chalk paint in the color of celery and we're just going to give that a good coat make sure that you press down the edges of the painters tape so that you don't um, have any bleed through and then I dried that, not fully, but just enough, and then peeled off the tape perfectly, straight line here. And then I went ahead and fully dried the stripe before we went ahead and put more painter's tape on it, because you don't want to put painter's tape on wet paint, because obviously that's going to be a problem. And then I made a, a thinner stripe going in the opposite way and painted that on. And I did the same thing, making sure you dry it before you, you know, put some more... Um, tape on so that you don't ruin your project and I well, my head's gonna get in the way but you'll see it. I made a tiny little stripe here I'm just making a little pattern look up ideas for like if you have a hard time with the creative part of it just look up ideas and images like on Pinterest or whatever um, but yeah I just did a medium and a thin strip of paint going up and down actually I did two of the little thin strips on either side of the medium one and then I'm just going to give this a little sanding, mainly on the edges. I'm trying to distress this a little bit 
Um, I didn't go crazy with it, just a little bit. Obviously, the distressing is totally up to you if that's your, you know, the type of thing that you like. I do, but that's why I did it. I'm going to give this a coat of Mod Podge just to seal it in, as you saw with all of my other projects. I've got a piece of twine here that I'm just going to use a lighter to burn off the extra fuzzies. If your twine is a little fuzzy, you can use a lighter to burn it. Just be careful that you don't burn anything down. And we're just going to tie that to the top of our cutting board here just for uh, decor purposes, for visual purposes. You could um, definitely hang this up on a little pegboard or something if you wanted, but we're just going to use this in a tear tray. And this is how all four of those um, last items came out. And let me know what you think down in the comments below. I was very pleased with these and they're, they like go, but they're not super coordinated, but they could definitely be put in the same area and look like they were meant to be. That's going to do it for today's video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, hit that like button. And if you are new to my channel and enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I'd love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.